Ten months ago, I started a YouTube channel, Writing with Sandhya. It was August 2021. The pandemic was raging and I was just sitting at home and I wanted to connect with other people, preferably like-minded authors and readers. The first season went on till April 2022 and the reception has been fabulous. Um, it is run every Saturday at 11 a.m. IST. We've had 29 episodes so far, interviewed 24 authors. Hello everyone, I'm Sandhya Ranganathan, author of Mia Finds a Home, an illustrator children's short stories book, and Burma to Bangalore, it's my father's autobiography that I co-authored with him. And my next book, If Then Else, is shortly going to be published by Vishwakarma Publications and will be released hopefully in the next few months. I'm represented by the Bookmakers Literary Agency. So in this channel, uh, what we had was a monthly theme. And so every month I had different themes like speculative, children, humor, poetry, romance, and mystery, and interviewed various authors. Uh, we've interviewed 24 authors till now. A lot of them represented by the book bakers. So a huge shout out to them and to Sihail Mathur, my literary agent. And also to Tuyara Productions, aka Tarana, my daughter, who you know shot all these videos, edited them, and also helped me with you know makeup and styling and all of that. So thanks to them, uh, this channel has run very successfully. And I did take a short break um, in May and June because it was summer holidays for my daughter. Uh, I was also doing some other things like uh, you know getting back to my blogs and you know run a short blogging course and uh, did poetry, released a lot of poetry. And I've also now started a podcast on the Mensa channel in the book bakers community. Uh, the, my circle is called Army Adventures with Sandhya. So lots of fun and interesting things. Uh, all of these episodes on my channel, I've also blogged about it on my blog, WordPress blog site called Between the Tropics. Now, the six of the first sessions were overview sessions on creative writing. And a lot of you, as usual, when I say a lot, uh, I mean a few of you. <laughs> so if it's more than three, uh, you know, unsolicited people have asked me for combining all of these and presenting it to you as a one-on-one -on -one series. So here I am with those six episodes, uh, which will form into a one-on-one -on -one kind of session. So the six episodes uh, compiled here are um, the first one, So You Want to Be a Writer, which talks about what it takes to be a writer. The second one, generally speaking, it's an overview of all the writing genres. And in third, Fact or Fiction, we deep dive a little bit into non-fiction genres and subgenres. The fourth one is Fiction, Faction, All That Action, which is a deep dive into fiction genres. The fifth one is called Short and Sweet, and as expected, it deals with short forms of fiction. Lastly, uh, episode 17 actually was poetry and talked about the different forms of poem. So here they are for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, compiled into one session so that you can have a one-on-one -on -one series with all these topics. To make it easier for you to refer, we'll also in the description uh, talk about the start points of each of these topics. So if you want to pause and get back to it, you can do that. I'll be back soon with the next season of Writing with Sandhya. And I want to do something different this time. Um, looking for any ideas. Maybe I'll do a poll on my channel. So look out for that. So enjoy and do give me your feedback. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sandhya Ranganathan and welcome to the first episode of my YouTube channel, Writing with Sandhya. I'm quite excited about this. Uh, I have written Mia Finds a Home, an illustrated children's book, illustrated by Piali. And I'm the co-author of my father's autobiography, Burma to Bangalore. Uh, his name is Lieutenant Colonel V.S. Ranganathan. And I'll talk a little bit more about these books later. But uh, I have published these books. I'm not a famous author, but a lot of people ask me about writing, about books. So I thought I'll start a channel and uh, share what I know and probably learn also a lot along the way. So if you have any specific questions as we go along, you know, feel free to ask. Um, I will have a weekly episode and uh, I will uh, try and answer all your questions. 
So how did it begin for me? Um, I think I was 10 years old um, when I got my first Enid Blyton book. I remember it was famous five, five get into a fix. And uh, since then I was hooked onto books, um, all the Enid Blytons, but I liked all the mystery books better, the ones with Fatty and the five find outers. Um, I think those who are in India or you know some of the other parts of the world have also grown up with Enid Blyton books. I do share which is your favorite uh, author uh, growing up, a children's author, and uh, what books you liked. So I just loved books. Before that I used to read comics and I really loved comics as well. Um, so that was a genre, you know, visual as well as uh, text that I really enjoyed. And then I read R.K. Narayan, you know, so Malgudi Days. And I was like, wow, you know, we have great writers in India as well. I read Tagore, um, and uh, he he's my all-time, you know, favorite. Um, in addition, I also, you know, I'm a big uh, fan of P.G. Woodhouse. I think a lot of us uh, are fans of P.G. Woodhouse and Jeeves. And uh, so humor is my favorite genre. I enjoy reading those books. So for me, I was, you know, growing up, I always had my head stuck in a book, summer holidays, all my cousins would be playing, but I would be sitting in a corner reading a book. So it was my love of reading and uh, there was no question in my mind that, okay, when I grow up, I'm going to write, right? That was the only thing that I really enjoyed, words, and I was just fascinated by it and I could just, you know, went into a different world, a whole world of imagination and I thought, this is wonderful, this is where I want to be. So that was my motivation for writing a book. Uh, however, it took many years for me to actually achieve that. Um, when I was turning 50, I was like, hey, what about my dreams and ambitions? I haven't yet written a book. And um, so I started writing this as a bedtime story for my daughter, Mia Finds a Home. So I have a cat called Mia and uh, it was just a little story about, you know, how I brought her home and Piali, you know, created these beautiful illustrations. Uh, and I just, we just went ahead and, you know, Kindle had just coming into India. We were just experimenting. How does this work? How does this work? And before we knew it, we were published. Right. So I was glad that, OK, you know, before I turn 50, I have at least published this book. I was writing my fiction novel along the way for many, very many years. So it's, uh, I think I started in 2006 and it's only this year, just now that I've got a contract for it and it should be out next year. So that took a long time, right? 16, 17 years in the making. Um, and then this was not something that I really planned. My father was writing his memoir, Burma to Bangalore. And it, there were just such lovely stories in it that I wanted to write it in a way that it's accessible to everybody, to a wide genre of people, and uh, helped him, uh, you know, write the stories. Uh, and that got published last year. So it's not easy. It's not easy to write a book. Um, you know, I have along the way in the in the years there were so many ideas that I had, and there were so many books that I started writing. Um, but many of them wouldn't go beyond chapter three, right? I would have a structure, then I sometimes had characters, but then it's, uh, you know, it's the plot and sustaining it. And, um, you know, and it does require a lot of time and effort and mental focus. And uh, which once I started, uh, you know, working, that became difficult. I would get it in fits and starts and, uh, you know, traveling to different places and, uh, uh, when my daughter came into my life and then it was for five years, yeah, all that writing just stopped. So it isn't easy writing a book. But I think, uh, you know, they say that everyone has a book in them. Uh, everyone has a story to tell, something to share, some skills that, you know, you'd like to share with the world that you can write about. I think one thing that I would like you to consider is, uh, yes, definitely do share what you want with the world. Um, and there is someone out there to read it or, you know, um, it's still, if it's just a burning desire in you that you need to do it, you are an artist, you're a creator, you know, just go ahead and create. Um, don't worry about the audience and the market, all of that will come. But um, should you write a book? So that's something which I would like you to consider. For me, in my mind, I always thought, okay, I'm going to write a book. And that actually hung me up so much that I never did, you know, I never try to blog much or, you know, send an article to a magazine for publishing. 
uh, I used to write poems, but I never sent it anywhere. And now I'm wondering why I didn't do all of that, right? So um, I would say that, you know, um, firstly, just start writing. Um, there are so many platforms and medium available now. You can just start blogging online. You can just vlog like this. Um, there are a lot of newsletters, magazines, uh, in print as well as online, which are uh, where you can send your writing for publishing. So just do that. Just keep writing. You know, uh, writing gets better with practice. Um, even if you have a creative streak in you, I think practice really makes it perfect. So if for nothing else, it will perfect it. But also for, you know, building a portfolio along the way and understanding what is your medium, what is your genre. So are you more, do you enjoy more of short stories? Uh, are you more of a poet? Um, does blogging, you know, help you just get your voice out into the world? Um, maybe it's not about writing and words after all, but maybe it's, uh, you know, it's on YouTube and you can just share your story. Uh, maybe you can just, it could be a graphic novel or you just want to draw or sketch. So think about it. Think about how you want to get your voice out into the world. Because now, um, unlike, let's say, 40 years ago or for, for, you know, 50 years ago, there are a lot of other mediums, a lot of other ways in which you can get your voice out quickly. And um, also maybe that best serves a purpose. If you have a specific audience in mind, you know, consider that as well. Like, you know, what's the best way to get your message or what you want to say out to those folks? Um, if it is something which is uh, technical or, uh, you know, educational or academic, uh, who's your audience? Are they young? Are they old? Where do they consume their information? Try and find that out and, uh, you know, get um, right in a way in which it reaches them. So that way you get, uh, you know, much better, a wider reach than um, what you have. If you're just writing for your own, uh, to express your own creativity, you know, think about what is it that you enjoy the most. Uh, I kept thinking all along that, you know, I can't write short stories. That seemed, uh, it's like, wow, you have to have a beginning, middle and end all within a short span and you have to build the characters and everything. And I never attempted it. But um, Recently, you know, when I tried writing it, I was like, hey, this is fun. And this is, you know, this is something we can, I can put together quickly as well. And what about blogging? You know, the whole online world is out there. So that's the easiest way to get, you know, get, start writing, you know, just uh, get out there, get your voice out, share it with your friends and family and maybe a larger audience. And it's a way of testing the waters. Like, is there a larger audience for your words? Um, so as I mentioned, I never blogged, but uh, I used to get a lot of questions on how I adopted my daughter. So I'm a single mom. I've adopted uh, my baby girl when she's two months old and now she's uh, 11 years old and thriving. And I used to get questions about uh, how I adopted her. So it was, you know, I used to keep repeating the same story. Um, so I started blogging about how I adopted her. And then I saw that so many people... Uh, you know kind of followed it it resonated with a few who reached out and it really made an impact so i was like okay why didn't i do this before i also blog a little bit professionally and you know i should continue doing that uh, uh, you know more seriously i think and come out with more regular blogs but my point is um think about uh, what you want to write and uh, how you want to write it and we'll explore all of this as we go along this journey um you know, you, you can write whatever you like, but it's good to even understand a little bit about uh, what are the different genres, um, maybe some of the mechanics of writing. Um, why not? You know, why not? And of course, there are lots more formal uh, classes and schools and techniques and all of that. But what I thought I'll share is uh, what I've learned, what worked for me. And uh, also, um, you know, it's helpful to get uh, just some quick best practices and tips that will help you get started. So are you along for the ride? I'm excited. Uh, I hope to see a lot of you write and do write to me. Let me know what you want to write, what you, your questions are. Um, and, you know, me see you again next week. That's it for now. Thanks. Bye. Good morning and welcome back to Writing with Sandhya for the second episode where we'll talk about genres. But before we get into that, uh, thank you very, very much uh, for all your support and encouragement when episode one came out. Thank you for all the likes and the subscriptions. 
uh, for those who haven't subscribed yet do that uh, then you'll get notified uh, when I come out with my weekly episode so before we get into that um, it's a fine Saturday morning I'm having my cup of green tea I hope you have your cup of tea or coffee and you can join me for the next 10 minutes when we'll talk about Chandra's. Uh, but I wanted to talk about a few things about how the first episode came about. Yes, it was a little raw. You know, some of you pointed out that it could be edited better. I've just been wanting to do this for a while and I just happened to be dressed up. That was Raksha Bandhan. You know, it's kind of rare in these pandemic days that we're not in our PJs. So I thought, okay, this is a good time to just start shooting. So I just shot it and uh, it just came out fine. It wasn't scripted or anything. So I just uploaded it. But I hope to get a little bit more uh, sophisticated as we, you know, go along this journey. I'm also learning all about YouTube. A uh, little bit about me for those who don't know much about me. Uh, a lot of the viewers... Uh, don't know uh, as much about me as some of my family and friends who have also supported me. So I do have a full-time job. I'm working as a technical communications leader in a multinational corporation and have been working in the field of technical communications training uh, in the, for the past 36 years. And I have a blog about that on my journey of 35 years. Um, so check out my website, vadnika.in. Um, where I my blogs are up there's a little bit more about me uh, this episode will come out every Saturday and I will have a follow-up blog where I just capture the highlights or the summaries of this video for those who like to prefer to read or you know would prefer to just spend a couple of minutes reading it than you know 10 minutes looking at this one so about the writing journey um, so the Mia Finds a Home is an ch illustrated children's book which I published along with my illustrator Piyadi and I'll talk more about that in future subsequent you know kind of issues. Uh, Burma to Bangalore is my father's uh, autobiography as I mentioned his name Colonel V.S. Rangnathan who's retired so he debuted as uh, when he was 88 years old so yes, I think as Rena mentioned, uh, it's never too late to start writing. It doesn't really matter. And then this is such a profession, you can pick it up any time or a hobby, if you will. And you know, just right up to your old age, you can keep writing as long as you have your faculties about you. Uh, so the book, um, I'm represented by the bookmakers. So huge thanks to Suhel Mathur, who's my agent and um, Loxley Hall Publishing, who uh, believed in the book and published it, and uh, you know, to everybody who supported it, outside our friends and family, who are our initial target audience. Uh, so that was an amazing journey. And again, in subsequent uh, episodes, I'll talk more about how to craft you know, those kind of books as we go along. So genres, what are genres? So genres are, uh, you know, the what category of books uh, you know books fall into i think all of you are aware of fiction and non-fiction so fiction is something which we create it's out of our imagination and non-fiction is facts it's reality it's about actual things that happen to actual people in actual places um, it could be current it could be in the past um, so that is non-fiction and i think we are all familiar with that so why does it matter? So when I started on this publishing journey, uh, my book, which is going to be out next year, uh, we were trying to figure out where to you know, categorize it. So if you go to Amazon, uh, if you scroll down in the product description, you'll see that where the book is categorized, any book, right? So whether it's under uh, autobiography, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, and those things matter. If you want to be a published author, you know, where it comes in terms of ranking. So that's one thing. And publishers also care about it because, uh, uh, you know, publish certain publishers publish only certain types of books. So if you've written a certain kind of thing, you need to know whom to go to, whom to approach for that kind of book or that kind of writing. So it does matter. And it also helps you when you write to help you focus that this is what... Uh, this is your market or your audience and this is whom you're writing to so it helps you also as a writer right so I think um, so that's why it's helpful and it also may give you inspiration on what kinds of things you may want to write about I think one of the uh, viewers asked are there what are the different kinds of writing can we get into besides fiction so we will talk about that briefly uh, today I'll give you an overview about it and in subsequent episodes we'll go 
uh, you know, into a little bit more detail and all of it. And really there's inspiration all around, you know. So uh, let's start with fiction. That's something we're all familiar with. So the three books that we read about life and which people um, write, a um, lot of them will fall under the category of mainstream. So that's mainstream fiction. And within that, there are so many uh, genres, um, mystery or uh, you know the detective stories that we all enjoy and of course Agatha Christie is the all-time uh, great over there and holds a record uh, still for you know uh, being uh, the one of the largest you know published author with and been so prolific so um, that's a genre by itself uh, romance is a huge genre it is a big market and you know caters to a certain audience uh, the speculative fiction, um, and there are a lot of subgenres here. So in subsequent episodes, I'll talk about the subgenres as well. And my book falls a little bit into mainstream speculative fiction. There's a lot of historical fiction that we've been reading of late, so and that's uh, highly interesting. And um, so there is that as well. And in India, mythological fiction is a huge market. Um, you know, everybody has um, been writing about it and uh, uh, you know like Suhail himself has written The Mare of Putras and uh, that's um, something which Indians can really get into. And my favorite humor, I already talked about that, here are all my P.G. Widow's books, so yes that's a huge genre um, which is not so easy to write um, but really enjoyable. I also hope in subsequent episodes to be able to talk to some of the authors and maybe have little chats on you know specific genres right um, so there's mainstream fiction and then there's literary fiction so literary fiction is when you have the language the only change you can have literary fiction in all these genres but it's just the the language the treatment and all of that is just a lot more um, you know kind of professional it's a lot more uh, sophisticated and uh, it's it's good writing you know? so I think a lot of things that we learn in literature whether it's in school or college that would fall under you know literary fiction um, then we also write for uh, children so all of this is for adults but there, okay, there's a whole uh, market for children and a lot of these uh, you know we have in children's books as well and young adult, that is another, you know, target market. And uh, they go for different kind of, um, you know, d different uh, treatment and language. Uh, vampire books uh, seem to be very popular. And of course, uh, more sophisticated mystery books. Uh, those are also popular with the young adults. So that's a, a little bit about fiction genres. Non-fiction, there are just so many. I don't know where to begin, of course. Um, my book uh, biography and um, so I have also kind of cleaned up my channel a little bit so if you see below my channel you'll see a few short videos on the Mia finds a home and uh, then the Burma to Bangalore book launch and it was mainly for the family but now all the videos are out so if you like you know go ahead and check them out and enjoy and the subscribe button is uh, there below at any time you can always subscribe to this channel and a huge market is self-help, you know, so um, and particularly in the pandemic times, I think that's um, such a huge target market, whether from yoga to anything at all. There are so many books on this subject, right? And things which are from true life, you know, crime stories or uh, adventure stories, action stories, um, either people themselves write or somebody else writes about them. Uh, I think that's um, a lot of... Uh, inspiration and a lot of market over there as well travel stories another of my favorite i love traveling uh, it's it's kind of a niche and of course paul Theroux is the guru over there but that's a lovely market to write as well and then there is like academic or technical books like it's on a particular subject and it's either for to be taught in you know schools and colleges or it's just for general knowledge and that's a huge variety of books uh, as i mentioned i'm myself i'm a technical writer and i'll talk a little bit more about this because this is again a niche uh, 
sort of um, market and it's uh, if you're into writing you like technology that could be an area that you could get into and have a very long thriving career the way I've had it and who doesn't like you know cookbooks um, or in just writing about cooking there's so many blogs about cooking um, I love to watch uh, MasterChef Australia I don't know how many of you like that uh, but that people uh, you know just like to watch about food and cooking even they may be good cooks or they may not be but you know that's something uh, voyeuristic in you know watching these uh, kind of shows and reading these books um, there's about religion about philosophy it could be like erotica political books about particular uh, uh, you know political figures or an era you know those are all books that we see out there uh, which also gets into history and we talked of historical fiction there's historical non-fiction as well journalistic books again about events and about a particular something that happened uh, you know people uh, writing about it so each of these we can really tell their subgenres. so in the, my next episode i'll talk about uh, fiction and the one after that about non-fiction and after that i will start delving into some of the genres before i start talking about the craft of writing um, so people have also asked am i a teacher uh, and on not on uh, not on writing so i do enjoy soft skills training leadership uh, you know training and coaching but uh, no i'm not i don't teach writing um i'm a working full-time full-time mom and when i have time i write so i really don't have time for that right now but yeah i'm open so who knows uh, you know maybe uh, if i have if there's a holiday or something and maybe if there is a need uh, i can look at coming up with some workshops but no I'm not really uh, this and this isn't uh, about teaching writing so much as just giving an overview an introduction and you know uh, getting giving you some ideas on how to go about this right so um, we'll talk all about that and in the next episode as I mentioned we'll talk about fiction so join back and do like comment share subscribe uh, and let me know what you would like to hear about and uh, we'll talk about that in subsequent episodes so see you next time fact or fiction welcome back to episode three of writing with sandhya so what do you think sells more fact or fiction what do you like more comment below and while you're doing that i just want to thank you um across 100 subscribers and i was so excited about that uh, it may not be big by YouTube standards, but this is my first channel, so it made me pretty happy. And my first video crossed 500 views, 550 views, I think. So, yeah, very happy with how everything is going. So, what did you think? Fact or fiction? So, the answer is fact. I think the world loves fact or non-fiction books and literature and writing uh, a lot more than fiction. Um, more non-fiction books are published all over the world and that's true in India as well. The fiction, non-fiction market is close to 26 billion and uh, growing. It's been, it grew by like 10% last year. Uh, whereas the fiction market is about half of that and has actually shown a slight decline. So clearly I think the market, the readers as well as the publishers are looking for non-fiction books more. So that's why I thought I'll start with the, this episode um, and we'll do fiction next time although fiction is you know close to my heart so uh, what was the best-selling book of 2020 you know can you guess uh, it was Barack Obama's memoir A Promised Land uh, I think that sold over two and a half million copies so I think that's uh, one of the genres of nonfiction as we learned in episode two and um, so what are the other top uh, selling nonfiction genres as I already mentioned, there's this whole, uh, you know, memoir, biography kind of section. Then self-help. Self-help is a big thing. And the pandemic, we're all turning to some kind of help for that. And, you know, business, academic kind of books. So these are kind of the top three genres for nonfiction books um, globally as well as in India. A lot more detail over there as well. So let's talk about that a little bit. Right. So the top one. Uh, so you might have heard the terms memoir, biography, autobiography. So what's the difference? I think autobiography, all of us know, are, uh, you know, somebody telling one's own story, um, just like, as I said, my father's did. And uh, biography, someone else writing 
someone else's story or your story so it's uh, not written in first person and it is uh, someone else either it's been recounted to them or they've done some research and came up with it and memoir uh, memoir um, is often interchanged with biography or autobiography but it's actually dealing with uh, a period of time in life or certain events which have shaped so it doesn't really uh, you know cover everything chronologically end to end the way uh, the autobiographies and biographies do so that's the subtle differences between the three and in india celebrity writing does very well here or you know writing about uh, celebrities um, and they also get made into biopics so i think that's a huge market over here self-help there's a whole amount to it um, of course over here we particularly are inclined to you know spiritual and religious books there's a uh, on uh, philosophy on health fitness uh, mental wellness uh, you know that's a big thing these days and psychological well-being uh, so just comment below what's your favorite self-help book uh, there could be any uh, so many right so i think uh, that's a huge market uh, anywhere in the world on business and academic books uh, in india the big market is education books that's still the number one kind of selling it's like a captive market right it's about a subject and if someone has written about it and it's being taught in schools or colleges that's what we mean by a captive market and uh, you have business and technical books i already spoke about you know technical uh, writing but there's also business writing and uh, you know, management, leadership, those kind of books. Uh, also things dealing with a particular topic, you know, so they may be an expert talking about a particular topic. So that's another genre which is good. And um, so these, and I talked last time about all the genres. So here are a few of the subgenres, and, you know, in later episodes, I might just pick one and uh, go into it uh, in full uh, detail, um, or we may even do a workshop on that. Um, so let me know which ones you're interested in and we can get into that a little bit more. So while we're talking about this here, so now we have, I hope like in your mind, if you're a writer, you're formulated, all right, this is what I want to do. I want to write a book or, you know, start a blog. Um, <coughs> this is the general, uh, this is the media in which I want it. I want it printed or online. We talked about that in the first episode. In the second episode, we talked about genres. So either you already have an idea and you know now which genre it fits into, or this might have given you some inspiration and ideas uh, for something to write about. Um, you know, for memoirs or fiction, just look around you. It could be your own story, uh, whether you're a celebrity or not, you have something which you have done and to share with the world. How about somebody around you? Uh, I remember attending Vikram Seth's uh, book launch, no, not his suitable boy, but his, uh, next another book of his and he actually wrote about his uncle and aunt and he had uh, you know found some notes about them found it very fascinating and wrote a book about that uh, just go and do your research and you know find out which book it is but uh, you know there's nothing preventing any of us to look for interesting stories they're there you know all around us um, so it could just even be an interesting character you met um, and that could just, you know, form into a short story, perhaps. So think about that, you know, if you just want to write and you're wondering what topic, I mean, this could be some things you could talk about. Another thing I wanted to cover in this uh, uh, vlog is uh, a, another way of categorizing, which if, you know, attend like a writing class or something, you often come across these terms. Um, and there may be some have three types, four types, five types, seven types of nonfiction. But let me talk about the four main types that typically come up, right? So that's expository, narrative, persuasive, and descriptive. So expository is when you're expounding on something, when you're doing a lot of uh, deep research and analysis. It could be about events, it could be about a trend, um, so, or some natural phenomena, and then you uh, write about it. So that's expository uh, nonfiction, that is helpful for someone who's uh, learning it, you know, for the first time. Narrative nonfiction, and that's like huge right now, um, you know, especially since the pandemic. I think uh, there has, uh, the publishers have been looking for more of these kind of books and the readers have also been, you know, seeking out these kind of books. 
So as I also ma mentioned, it's, um, you know, biographies and all of that, that form as part of this category. It discusses facts. So it's, uh, but in terms of a narrative or a story. So, and it uses the regular book structure of uh, chapters and uh, organizing work uh, like a regular book, unlike expository where it can be more like a thesis. Uh, persuasive nonfiction is when um, you take a point of view or a stand or an opinion on something and try to persuade the reader to your point of view, right? So um, there are many examples of this kind. Um, so, you know, just do share if you kind of have uh, read any of these kinds of books, what category do you think they fall into? What do you particularly like? Um, so my friend Joyce had asked a question, what is the difference between, I think, discur discursive writing and, you know, uh, imaginative writing? So discursive writing is kind of a form of persuasive writing. Um, persuasive is trying to persuade you, but discursive is purely, you know, presenting the facts, like how you would do um, debates in school, uh, you know, just kind of pros and cons and present it to the <coughs> to the people who are listening and uh, they have to take the final call. So that's discursive where you're just dealing with facts, which is the complete opposite of obviously imaginative and creative writing. So there you go. That's the difference, right? So in school, you may be called upon to write an essay, which is discursive, which is uh, more about uh, deep diving into a subject and understanding uh, both sides of it. And imagination and is just, you know, from your own you just create something from your own um, imagination. So descriptive nonfiction is where you're describing things in a lot of detail. A typical uh, one is, of course, travel books. And uh, so that's another that's another favorite genre of mine, but uh, it has a very niche kind of a segment. Uh, I did want to mention <clears throat> cookbooks. You know, last time, too, I talked about two cookbooks uh, and everyone liking that. Here's an interesting one by Padma Lakshmi, you know, the favorite, uh, you know, actor, presenter. She, she's written a cookbook called Tangy Tart, Hot and Sweet. And what's interesting about this is she's also written little stories as she goes along. And this is called a food war, you know. Uh, it's a memoir, but with food in it, because it isn't particularly categorized any other way, but uh, it is. Um, and one of my favorite, uh, you know, publications, Lonely Planet, which is Lonely Planet, sorry, which unfortunately seems to be going out of print. Um, you know, Greece, one of my favorite holidays over here. But yeah, travel books, travel books are like these, where you do research and you write about it. So, um, and true, true life stories, and we have autobiographies, we have true crime. Um, my publisher. Sanjeev Mathur has written Gunning for the Godman and this is doing extremely well, a bestseller. And it's sort of deep dived, I found out all the facts about a particular sensational story and presented it to the public. Um, so that's also something you can look out for. Is there something which has happened? Um, is that something which you would like to, uh, you know, learn more about and share with the public? So this time we've talked about nonfiction. Next time we'll talk about fiction. So see you again next uh, sir, next weekend. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you know, you see my little face in the corner. You can click there and you can hit subscribe or you can go down and hit subscribe. Like, comment, share if you like it. Share it with people whom you think it will be interesting to. Uh, could be students or anybody who wants to write. Thank you and see you next time. Bye. Hi, welcome to episode four of Writing with Sandhya. We're going to be talking about fiction, faction and all that action. I know in episode three, we talked about nonfiction and the different genres over there and how it is such a you know big seller in the market. But there's nothing like fiction, is it? It's uh, so enjoyable to read. And if you're a writer, it's uh, so much fun to create. I'm here with my wall of books. Uh, you saw my PG Warehouse last time, but I have some of my favorite books here. A lot more of humor and uh, travel. I think those are the genres that I'm particularly interested in. So let's talk about the fiction market. Um, so fiction, uh, we can classify that into two or three main categories. We have literary fiction, you know, the kind that we learn in literature, in school and college. Uh, there's Anita Nair from India who still writes a lot of uh, literary fiction. I attended her workshop, which is called Anita's Attic. 
these are the books from the attic over here and it was a wonderful experience then we have genre fiction we talked about that you know the different categories in episode two and uh, you know one question which a lot of people have been asking me is uh, but a lot of the books that we read don't really fit into one of these categories in fact the books i'm writing don't really fit into these categories what are these kind of books like what are chetan bhagat right who's a big bestseller in india what category is that so that just comes under the general category of mainstream and that's the vast majority uh, of books which you know that fall into that category so what are the top selling genres you know across the world um, any guesses it is romance and um, i remember you know growing up all the girls used to read Mills and Boone. I don't know what they read these days. Uh, there's erotica, of course, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey, anyone. And my favorite, again, is mystery, crime. Uh, we did talk about Agatha Christie being the all-time bestseller in this genre, but uh, Ruth Rendell is one of my favorite, and uh, Rex Stout. I enjoy those books. Speculative fiction. Now, under speculative, there are lots of subgenres which are all very popular. There's fantasy, there's science fiction, uh, you know, some of thriller, horror, dystopian kind of books. So what's dystopian? It's like when the world has you know, come to an end and a very dark future. And, you know, what happens then? You know, think Frankenstein, um, you know, Stephen King is, of course, the king of horror. And um, so these kind of books all fall under speculative fiction. So that's a huge, uh, you know, uh, market over there. Then we come to young adults and under young adults you have all kinds of books, you know, from spy and crime and uh, romance, fiction, all, all of that. So I think sci-fi, um, you know, romance, young adults tend to be very loyal readers. So once they get onto a particular writer or a series, they stick with it. So that's, uh, you know, market to tap into. Uh, children's books, of course, uh, after, you know, which are the top selling books of all time. Uh, I think everyone knows the top one, uh, after the Holy Bible and the Holy Quran, uh, it is the Harry Potter series, you know, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series, which are my personal favorite as well. Uh, I really enjoy those books. What about India? Uh, very similar, but uh, uh, the number one bestseller for many years has been mythological fiction over here. Uh, it started with Amish Tripathi's uh, blockbuster Shiva trilogy. And uh, there are many, many more books have been written there. There's almost a glut in the market uh, for these kind of books. Romance rules the, uh, rules the roost here as well, as well as thriller and horror. Horror is a growing genre here. In fact, there is even a Horror Writers Association and Neil De Silva is the president of that. Uh, he's also one of the authors who works with the bookmakers, my literary agency. In fact, this is a bookmaker shelf, all the you know books written by authors in that agency, the ones that I've picked up. So let's uh, deep dive a little bit into some of uh, these genres and what are the subgenres, right? Uh, in romance, you have contemporary, you can even have paranormal, so here you see some mixing of different subgenres, historical, uh, inspirational, romantic, suspense, and as I talk, spoke about young adult. I used to always love Georgia Dare growing up and she had a lot of fun books uh, which were like romantic and also you know suspenseful uh, so uh, I, I personally enjoyed those books very much uh, mystery uh, lots of subgenres over there uh, there's uh, something called cozy mysteries which are like comforting and nice to read um, you know true crime we talked about that last time who done it um, there's nowadays this scientific uh, you know cyber crime kind of mysteries uh, and then that you know the usual hard-boiled detective stories, uh, police procedures, uh, so many categories within mystery itself. So uh, if this is something you'd like to write about, I mean think uh, from what information you already have or what you can get so that you can craft a good story yeah. I and mean, a good mystery story. Yeah. Fantasy. So there's a huge market here. Um, you know, again, the young adults, uh, of course, they kind of, uh, as I said, they're very loyal, but so are the adults, you know. Um, if you think of the Lord of the Rings, there are people who really are, uh, go deep into it. It's a whole cult. They know all the different uh, characters and their backstories and front stories and whatnot. 
So yes, fantasy, uh, it involves a lot more work uh, and it depends on different markets uh, yeah, and all publishers don't you know, publish that. But um, there are so many varieties of it. There's urban fantasy, there's uh, steampunk, epic, high fantasy, dark fantasy, right? Sword and sorcery, these kind of things. Um, there's certain kinds of fiction where magic realism, you know, is used. Um, I think uh, Salman Rushdie has used it to great effect um, and in other books as well. Gabriel Garcia Marquez's, you know, 100 Years of Solitude. I think that should be here somewhere. So this is just my wall of my favorite books. I have lots more walls with a lot of my other books. And um, some of these books are just, you know, waiting to be read as well. Um, okay, so the bestsellers, you know, when they talk of bestsellers, what does that mean? Uh, again, as I spoke about mainstream, so it could be like a, like a general category, it's about life or, uh, you know, some particular one of these. Uh, Dan Brown, I think the Da Vinci Code is the number one, uh, you know, kind of a top bestseller of all time. It is kind of uh, really did very well in the market. So what are future trends? So these are all the ones that are already there. And it's, uh, it's so exciting to think about, okay, what is it that I, I mean, I can write or uh, if you already have something in mind, now you know, you know, where to kind of slot it. Um, so how about some of the trends which are there right now, right? What is it that the new trends that people are looking for? The pandemic, of course, uh, you know, pandemic, uh, anything to do with that, people are intensely curious about it. And that naturally kind of leads to the dystopian, uh, you know, kind of fiction that I spoke about. And what is very interesting to me is uh, strong female leads are apparently very much the thing and I'm so happy to hear that. So I a female, LGBTQ+, plus, uh, all of these are also great topics uh, that the, the market is looking for. And with the future, things like artificial intelligence, robotics, you know, uh, fiction which brings that into your stories. So that's interesting. You can think about it if you, are the, you know, but all of these also require some amount of or a lot of research, depending on uh, what kind of story you want to write and how much of imagination you want to use. Right. So what about faction? I told you at the beginning, I'm going to talk about faction. So this is not fiction, this is not non-fiction, what is that? So it's kind of what it sounds like, that it's a blend of facts and fiction, uh, truth and, um, you know, not uh, truth and, you know, mixing your own imagination into it. So you create stories based on, maybe it is set in history and everything is historically perfect, but you or a character uh, is over there and you talk of it from that point of view. Right. Uh, you know, one of those inclusion questions which we keep asking is, oh, if you could have a, fam a lunch with a famous personality uh, who from the past, who would it be? Uh, mine personally would be, I think, Rabindranath Tagore. Uh, I really admire him as a writer. Uh, he actually even was awarded the Nobel Prize but returned it on uh, his own uh, ethical grounds. Um, so I have a very high regard for him. So I'd love to meet him, you know, lunch with Tagore. So if you write something like that, so maybe you research everything, everything is exactly right, but you know, you have introduced a character or you're writing from, you know, a particular point of view. Yeah, Roots is a book which I read growing up. Um, Alex Haley had talked about uh, going back to his ancestors in Africa and, uh, but he actually wrote it as a story. So uh, that is a great example of fiction as well. So with that cool tip, uh, you know, we'll end this episode and uh, now it's time to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, I think you've heard a lot of overviews about what are genres, you know, types, categories, forms, media, all of those things uh, in these five, four episodes. Uh, I may want to do uh, interview some people, get in some guests to talk in future episodes of uh, this show. So look out for that. Till then, happy reading, happy writing uh, and do subscribe to this channel. Please like, comment and share, um, really appreciate it. I know a lot more of you are viewing it than those who are subscribing. So please do subscribe and share it with people with whom you think uh, it'll be of interest to them. Bye-bye.
and sweet note to start the short and sweet blog. Uh, you saw all my tiny books, but uh, this blog is about tiny stories or short stories. Uh, it's easier said than done. I always, uh, you know, thought that I couldn't write short stories. I don't know why. I always thought, that, okay, I should write uh, my great novel first. And uh, recently I started writing short stories and I've regretted it. It's like, why didn't I try this earlier? So what's a short story? I think all of us know um, it's uh, typically around 1,000 to 10,000 words, um, something within that length. Uh, there are lots of short stories that we love to read over the years, so I picked up a few from my collection. Uh, my all-time favorite is the pocket book of O. Henry's stories. O. Henry is amazing, just in one page and he can do wonders. And of course, uh, Jeffrey Archer. Uh, this is Kara Nine Tales, but his twist in the tale is like a classic, it's iconic. Um, that's, uh, you know, uh, some short stories. I don't know why publishers don't want to publish short stories, but readers love to read them. So there is some kind of uh, oxymoron situation going on over there. There are lots of Indian short stories as well. Lots of people write short stories uh, from Ruskin Bond to um, R.K. Narayan. And uh, here's the Penguin Book of Modern Indian Short Stories. It's like an anthology or a collection. And an anthology is a collection of uh, short stories in this case right so what is a short story so within the reason i used to fear it so much is that within this short space of words you have to create some conflict you need to have characters you know at least a protagonist and maybe a few characters and you need to have a beginning middle and end all within you know just a few pages how do you do that um so you can't go into it in depth into the character's motivations or give lots of descriptions of scenes uh, like the way you would do in a longer novel. Things have to be set up very fast. Things have to happen very fast, even if it's something which is a mental or psychological kind of a story. And then it has to you know, have some logical conclusion or ending as well. So there you have it. That's a short story, uh, typically dealing with just one event. Um, but there are lots of kinds of short stories and I just picked 10 that I thought I'd share with you just to get uh, your juices flowing and uh, you know start writing it would uh, maybe one of these spark an idea and you can write about that so we talked about the regular short story but there are nowadays there's uh, with the social media there's lots of much uh, smaller stories coming into play and that's called flash fiction so anything from 300 to a thousand words it's called flash fiction or postcard. So anything which would fit into, you know, a postcard. Anything below 300 words is microfiction. I don't know if you've seen the six word story challenges where you see a picture or some kind of a reference and then you just have to write the whole story in six words. And I just tried and actually uh, it did work at times. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, try doing that. It's a very quick way of getting started. But sometimes you have to think a lot more. Uh, to write less okay and uh, lyrical is something interesting it's a recurring theme you know something which keeps um, coming again so and that's the hook which ties the whole story together i think there was a story called the fly and uh, you know that was a recurring theme over there vignettes so vignettes are just almost like part of a short story or it's part of a longer story so there is a longer story happening you pause and then you zoom in into either a description of a character or an event or a particular place. And after that's done, you zoom out. So just that part which has been zoomed in can be a vignette and you know, stand by itself. We've all grown up with fables, uh, you know, uh, stories with a moral, uh, typically with uh, animals or some simple figures. Uh, Aesop's fables uh, come to mind. And in India, you have folklore like the Panchatantra and there are lots of uh, uh, vast and great folklore that we have over here. Um, fairy tales, I grew up reading the Raven Nights and I really enjoyed those stories. So that's fables, you know, things which are already written. Sometimes you can retell them in a modern way. So that's something to look at. So there is a story already existing. How can you, you know, present it in a modern way? 
An anecdote is of course straightforward. It's like a story of a real incident that happened with real people. Um, you know, something which you would sit and share at a party. Maybe it's, you know, good enough to make it into a short story. Epistolary, um, this is, you know, time tested, ep you know, kind of epic writing a letter. That's what it is. And um, there are lots of human plays like that. I've seen some Hindi plays which, you know, fall the within this character uh, which use this uh, norm and it's quite interesting frame story is like a flashback um, so uh, you're setting the context uh, again it could be for a larger story or a larger novel but it could be a standalone piece by itself if you write that and how about a story sequence like a sequence of stories with uh, something connecting them together like a common thread or a common hook it could be a series of stories of uh, which happen on a train, for example, or any train, you know, so uh, train stories. Uh, now, if you see anthologies that I spoke about earlier, usually they do have some kind of a theme and you have all the stories in that, you know, related to that theme. So you can use a story sequence and um, which is like a hook to anchor all your stories. A sketch story. Uh, is uh, you describe a character or location uh, there's little or no plot I mean it's just mainly just a description of the character and that's a great way to actually practice your writing skills you know just write in depth of just about one character or about just one place or and a setting so that would be a way to um, you know even get started so there you have it really short and sweet this time and um, Hope you enjoy and get started with writing something small and see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to start something exciting from next time. We're going to start interviewing some authors. The first author in the series is going to be Anu Anaya, uh, the author of I Am In Denial. And you'll meet her next Saturday. So please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, share, comment, and uh, because you're going to see a lot more exciting episodes and themes coming up. Um, and if you have ideas, uh, you know, do share them in the comments. I, I do read all the comments and reply to them at this point. So thank you so much for all your support. All the videos have got like a hundred or more likes. My first one is just skyrocketing still, you know, getting close to 600 likes now. Uh, the numbers doesn't matter. It just gives me some small thrills like this uh, small uh, segment about short stories. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you and see you next Saturday. Hi folks, welcome to Writing with Sandhya. Mia and I wish you a very happy 2022. Thank you so much for all your support in the past year. So I have written an ode to you, all my viewers. You clapped, you cheered, you commented. Over 15 episodes, our ties have cemented. Fiction and non-fiction nuances are described. You watched, you liked, and you subscribed. Then the chats with the authors, the meeting of the mind, your reception to those who are equally kind. Speculative children, humor, you like them all. Much gratitude to the guests who graced this channel. Now, where do we go from here? You tell me. What should we listen to? What should we see? I'm listening and I hope you keep watching. And Saturday coffee breaks continues to be a thing. So thank you very much and welcome to January. And as you might have guessed, the theme for this month is poetry. I was in Kurg for the winter break and it was beautiful there. Uh, I loved all the bird song. I think I'm trying to get the Malabar whistling thrush at the beginning of uh, this episode. And I just used to wake up every morning just to listen to him. I was wondering what the theme for this month would be. And sitting in those lush green and ones of Kurg, uh, the answer came to me, it has to be poetry. I have been writing poems since I was 10 years old, you know, just starting with, you know, just rhymes. And uh, after that, you know, all those funny limericks, <laughs> I used to enjoy all those nonsense limericks. Edward Lear is the king of uh, nonsense limericks and I enjoyed reading him. After that, I experimented with free verse, 
But all of that was intensely personal. So I write poetry when I'm unable to express myself any other way. And uh, therefore it turns out to be a very private experience for me and I haven't published it anywhere since. Maybe in the college magazine and uh, I think another magazine out there. But I haven't really uh, tried publishing them. But in the last year, uh, you know, some of my poems have gotten published in anthologies. Um, you know, this beautiful book, Assorted Flowers. And um, there are some others, Out of the Blue, The Unspoken Words, and even a Hindi poem in Dil Ki Baat. And uh, a very special one uh, called A Safe and Brave Space from the Garden of Neuro. And that's an, a global anthology. And I'll probably share that in a later episode. So poems uh, still hold their relevance. Maybe they're not published as much or uh, read as much, but you know, countries still have poet laureates. Um, and there is a need, especially I think with all that's going on in the world for us to reflect and uh, get into our private space think about things, feel things. So I think poetry will always hold its relevance. I've spoken a lot about prose in my initial episodes of this channel. So what's the difference between poetry and prose? Um, prose has short forms and longer form, forms, but poetry it tends to be a very powerful and intense expression in a concentrated form. So relatively, it's much shorter. It could be a feeling, a thought, an event, or a description of something. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about the basics of poetry. It can be rhyming or free verse. Uh, you know, I started off that uh, as rhyming. Free verse is when it doesn't have rhymes, but still follows some kind of a structure. So what structure is that? Uh, it's typically in stanzas or in prose, as we call it, paragraphs. And um, it tends to have a meter. A meter is the cadence in which the form is written. So it could be the rhyming cadence. Uh, in limericks, as I said, it's A, A, B, B, A. So that means the first two words, uh, sentences are rhyming, then the second two sentences, and the fifth one rhymes with the first two. So first, second, and fifth are rhyming, third and fourth are rhyming, A, A, B, B, A. Get that? And haiku is another place where the meter is expressed in syllables itself. So there are, you know, the traditional form of haiku is... Um, you know, five, seven, five, five syllables in the first line, seven in the second, and five again in the third. And of course, there are other, uh, you know, rules for haiku, and hopefully we can delve into that into in one of the, a future episode over here. So that's a little bit about, uh, you know, just the structure of poetry. And um, now let's talk about the different types of poetry. We've already talked about rhyming, we've talked about free verse. There could be epics, and epics, are huge lengthy poems. In India, we have the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. Um, in English, there's Homer's, uh, uh, the Odyssey and Iliad, very long pieces of poetry. Now, narrative poetry is similar to an epic, uh, probably relative short, relatively shorter. It tells a story. So we have Henry Longfellow's The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. And I remember reading this in school. I'm going to give a lot of references to school, I think, because I think that's when I've read a lot of poetry. Uh, unfortunately, after that, I haven't read so much uh, of other people's poems, and I hope this month I'll do more of that. And I hope everyone does too. Uh, as I mentioned, I think uh, that's the sustenance of the soul and the spirit and the heart. So we need poetry. Haiku, I already spoke about the form of haiku. And it's a narrative poem. Uh, it's a three-line poem which originates in Japan. Um, Matsuo Basho has written lots of poems, um, over a thousand. And um, I have written a couple of haiku in this book. Um, this book has, is all about flowers, holds a record of sorts. And I have written about uh, the sunflower and the lotus. So I'll read... Um, my poem on sunflower, haiku. Should we write poems when the world is full of tears? The sunflower turns. Then we move on to sonnet. A sonnet has 14 lines. It's uh, usually about love. 
if anyone has read Shakespeare, you have read a lot of sonnets over there. So there are typically two kinds of sonnets with the Shakespeare in one and the Petrarch in one. An ode, an ode is a dedication uh, to a, a tribute to a person or a thing. I started off with an ode to all of you. So that's an example of an ode. Um, the most famous one is John Keats, Ode on a Grecian Urn. You can write an ode on just about anything. You can write an ode on your pets, uh, even on the trash can. <laughs> so go ahead and try that. Um, that would be a fun, uh, poetic you know, exercise to do. A ballad is a nar narrative verse. It can be poetical and it tends to be musical. Uh, it's often sung in ancient days. I remember again back in school, uh, you know, reading about young Lockin who, you know, who rode in from the West. And um, all, all of uh, the po poets have, uh, you know, tried out this form of storytelling. And lastly, Villanelle, it's a very old form of uh, French poetry. It's a 19-line poem, has a very strict structure uh, with five tercets and a quatrain. And, uh, and even the internal rhyme is very specified. There is a refrain. Um, there's a very famous one by Dylan Thomas called Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night. I also tried this out and I've published it in one of my books. Uh, I can't seem to find it. So when I find my book, uh, maybe I'll read it out later. So that's about all the traditional forms of verse. Uh, modern, there are lots of different ways. It tends to be free verse these days, but there's also something called slam poetry, which is uh, more of a performance where it's not just about the words, but you also uh, you know, read out the poems at an event. And uh, Rupi Kaur has, uh, you know, popularized this very famous all over the world. And she also posts on Instagram a lot of her uh, small pieces of Insta poetry. Um, I grew up in Lucknow, so I've read a lot of Hindi uh, poets. I remember um, Harivan Shrai Bachchan, of course, and, uh, you know, names like Surekant, Tripati Nirala, Maitri Sharan Gopt, and so many others. And of course, being in Lucknow, also Urdu Shairi, um, I unfortunately don't understand so much of it, but it sounds beautiful to the ears and I would love to understand more. Uh, famous uh, shires are Amir Khusro, Mirza Ghalib, and of course, Javed Akhtar in modern days. So who doesn't know Rabindranath Tagore, a uh, Bengali uh, you know, poet and also in English, and it's often set to music. Um, the, his poems, which are set to music in Bengali, are also called Rabindra Shangit, and um, one of my favorite authors and poets. I'm a Tamilian, so in, uh, we have Tirukural, which is an ancient classic uh, Tamil language text. It has 1,330 uh, you know, verses of uh, you know, seven words each called Kural. Um, it was written by Tiru Valuvar and uh, in the 5th century and still last through this day. So that's just a little bit of an introduction to poetry and the rest of the month I hope to meet uh, poets and get them to you and uh, understand how they write and also about they can read out their poems to you. So what kind of poetry do you like to read uh, or to write? And if you are from any other state or country, are there famous poets and poems in your language other than English? So do share, do comment and subscribe below. Uh, you know, there's that little matter of a bell icon also, I believe. So with that, wish you a very happy 22 and see you in the next episode.